Today I want to talk about loneliness and the reason why I think this is an important topic is because we all feel it as a natural human response. So we all experience loneliness to some degree but after what we've all just been through that sense of loneliness has been exacerbated in so many people myself included. I'd just come out of a long-term relationship and I went from having three years of constant human connection to going into lockdown and having basically none. And that really had a massive impact on me. And I know that a lot of people, maybe potentially you, have experienced something really similar. So in this video, I wanna talk about what loneliness is, what are the causes of loneliness, and then how we can avoid it to the best of our abilities. So welcome to The Power of Helping. My name's Ruben Wax, and I'm a trainee counselor, and I'm passionate about improving people's lives so that they're then in a better place to empower and support the people around them. Loneliness really does affect all of us, and a study showed that around 45% of the population often feel lonely. So it's something that we really should take seriously. So what is loneliness? Loneliness is a psychological and social need. In the same way that when we feel hungry, we need food. When we need water, then we feel thirsty. When we need connection, human connection, then we feel the psychological pain of loneliness. Now in our society, we often put our physical needs above our psychological needs. But if you look at the studies, they show that loneliness has a higher impact on our mortality rate than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And it's twice the impact of being obese. So getting these psychological needs met is a fundamental part of us feeling good and healthy as human beings. Now, why do we have such a strong response in our biology? Well, it had a very, very useful application for thousands and thousands of years. Now, when we were part of tribes, if you were left away from the tribe, if you lost, got lost somewhere, this meant that you were in a huge amount of danger. So our body would send signals to get you to go as quick as possible to find your tribe again. And the people who got more social pain, the people who felt more pain when they were disbanded from their tribe and who re-entered had a higher chance of surviving. So as a result of survival of the fittest, we've ended up as a species that feel a high amount of psychological and social pain when we feel lonely. And that's why rejection hurts so much because we feel like we're being ejected from our tribe and then suddenly we're in mortal danger. So we've got to remember that our ancestors, they grew and thrived as a species because they banded together. And we're the first civilization in history to try and disband that. So of course your pain makes sense because of this cataclysmic change in our lifestyle. You're not broken. If you feel anxious or depressed or lonely, these feelings make sense because we have changed so much and we're not getting those fundamental psychological needs met. And now that we're living this ridiculously busy lifestyle, when we think about our work commitments, our family commitments, and all of our other commitments, then when we get too busy, the first thing to get cut is most often seeing our friends or social engagements. But when we keep doing this, which we are often doing now in this modern lifestyle, we end up with chronic loneliness where we're feeling it very regularly. And what it can do is play tricks on us where, for example, we start to see things as more dangerous than they are, or we actually can start to misunderstand people's facial cues. So when they're being happy, we see them as more as neutral, or even if they're neutral, we see them as being negative. And then what happens then is this becomes self-sustaining because we start to feel like, they're not enjoying me being here and so I'm not gonna be here and then you're there less and people invite you to things less and it, it becomes self-sustaining. And I really wanna just quickly cover a couple misconceptions that seem to crop up around loneliness. And the first is that you need to be isolated and alone to feel lonely, but you could actually be surrounded by people and still feel incredibly lonely. We see this a lot with celebrities, but it's because it's about the deepness and the level of connection that you're getting, not about the amount of people that are around you. And the second thing is, is that we often don't feel loneliness as loneliness. It crops up in different ways. So one way is that we just feel quite tired all the time or unmotivated, or it might just come out as, I feel like I gotta do this all by myself. Or it can come out as, if I left today, I don't feel like anyone would even notice. So there are lots of different ways that it does come up in our lives and we do feel it that doesn't just feel like an instant, oh, I'm just feeling lonely. So now let's talk about the causes of loneliness in our day-to-day -day lives. A really big part of this is our tech. 
and that's our social media, how much we're using our phones and all of that. I just did a video on that last week, which I'll link to in the description below. And also I did say that I'm gonna do a video on social media at some point, but it's really worth in this video, just touching on it very briefly, because we really weren't doing great when it came to loneliness, anxiety, and depression before the internet came along and before social media came along. But as Johan Hari points out in his book, Lost Connections, one of the fundamental issues is that social media looks phenomenally like what we're lacking. We need some connection, we get online. If we need some value, we need some status, we post a status. Now, all of this is good, but it's about as nutritious for our psychological needs as eating chips for dinner. So it's one thing that we just really gotta pay attention to. Now, another thing that Rongan talks about in his book, The Stress Solution, is the pain that we feel when we don't have a sense of purpose. And purpose is one of those ones where we often think, having a sense of purpose, that's having an impact on our mental health. But having that drive of what we want to do and we're going out and doing it, it does so much for our mental health. So when we look at our work, are we fulfilled? Is there some form of serving others? Are we contributing in a way where we feel good regularly? Are we interacting with people? Are we connecting with people in our work? It's something that we really should consider because I know that in a lot of the work that I've done in the past, I haven't felt those things and it has wreaked havoc on my mental health. And so now if we move on to how to avoid loneliness, if we start there at our jobs and our purpose, if you can try and angle your job so that there is some sort of serving others, whether you decide to mentor someone who's new in your company or you decide to help out with the fundraiser at your work, Something like that can really boost our sense of feeling like we're part of a tribe and a community. And then if you can't do that at work, then going out and volunteering has so many benefits for our psychology and for our mental well-being. And volunteering is also great because if you're feeling at a point where you genuinely think that people don't want you around, then volunteering is a place where they are gonna be so pleased that you're there and that you're gonna be actually helping people that need your support and they're gonna be so grateful that you're there and it's gonna help kind of boost that sense of self-esteem and that you are valued and that's gonna to help to reduce the sense of loneliness in your life. Now Vivek Murphy, when talking about serving others, made this great point, which is that when we serve others, we shift the focus from ourselves onto them. And when we spend too much time looking inwards at ourselves and thinking about ourselves negatively, it can really chip away at our self-esteem because we start to think that the reason that we're not surrounded by people and connecting lots is because of how valuable we are. So when you go and serve others, you start to boost your self-esteem because you start to feel valued. And so another way that over the long run we can help to reduce the loneliness in our lives is by checking ourselves whenever we have a negative thought about particular situations. So asking ourselves, am I perceiving things as more negative than they potentially are? Do I have assumptions about particular social settings or social events? And are those founded in real truth or is that something that I'm just assuming is gonna be a negative experience? And then if you think maybe you are, then it's about asking yourself, are you doing that to avoid being hurt and to avoid opening up? And then thinking, can I risk maybe doing that a little bit more than I currently am? And one way of doing that in a safe environment is joining a class or joining a club or joining a team because you know that that is a set amount of time. It's not an endless amount of time that you'll have to choose to leave at some point. You say, I'm gonna go learn a dance or I'm gonna go join a, a sports team. And that's just gonna be for a few hours and then you know you can leave. And that connection could slowly build over time. For me, when I was going through lockdown and I was feeling this really deep sense of loneliness that was playing out as almost a depression for me, that when I was on my counseling training, that group really supported me through that just by being there. But it's also really important to remember that if you think that this is playing quite a key part in your life and your happiness, then try and see a professional, see a therapist, see a counselor, potentially CBT could be really useful for those negative thoughts, but any sort of talking therapy where you're getting that deep connection and you're getting that support can be really, really beneficial. And lastly, it's important to remember that if we do reach out and it doesn't go as planned, that's okay. You reached out and that's really, really positive because 
We can't have expectations of everything always going well. Sometimes it might not go well, but the more that we do it, the more we're gonna feel comfortable and then the higher chance we're gonna have of getting one of those deeper connections. And if you are feeling lonely and you do need some support, but you don't know where to turn, then please feel free to hit me up on Instagram. I'm more than happy to chat on there. And so in summary, we all feel loneliness to some degree. And if you are feeling some sort of psychological pain, such as chronic loneliness, anxiety, depression, you're not broken. It's not a glitch in the matrix. We're feeling natural human responses to this bonkers situation that we have found ourselves in. So just keep going. It might be a struggle at the beginning when you're reaching out to people, but it's a worthwhile endeavor. And next week is all gonna be about the benefits of helping other people. So I really look forward to seeing you there. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider hitting the like and the subscribe and the bell button so you know when the videos come out. And I look forward to seeing you next week.